doing today? Um, mangrove jacks, bourbon barrel, strong aged, uh, strong yield, sorry. So this is 6.5%. It's uh, tasting notes, dark fruits and caramel mix perfectly with a bourbon aroma followed by a subtle vanilla hint. Full bodied, fruity and boozy with chocolate and caramel flavours that are finished with a distinct lingering bourbon aftertaste. So yeah, I had a look at the kits and I was looking for something different, you know, not like an IPA kit or anything like that, anything I could make myself basically, you know, because I could knock them out with my eyes closed. So yeah, I saw I saw this one and it caught my attention because I remember, I don't know when, last year sometime, I seen Tube Dino's um, did a review of uh, someone that sent them a beer, it was this one, he seemed to quite like it. And uh, yeah, as soon as I seen it, I remembered about the video and thought, hmm, sounds interesting. Plus the other reason was, um, if you can see at the bottom, they've actually gave us some decent yeast. M42, that says New World Yeast. A lot of times with these kits, they give you the, they just give you a silver pack and it just says yeast on it or something like that. You don't know what you're getting, but at least they've got something. So when I did a bit of research, it turns out that this used to be called the New World. Let's let's get it right. The M42 New World Strong Ale Yeast. New World used to be called British Ale Yeast. So how does that work exactly? Tip it. Well, it's supposed to be pretty clean. It's supposed to be a bit like maybe not as clean as the M44, but um, but yeah, but. I think it said something, there is a mark, basically does um, imperial stouts, all that type of stuff, so that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing one for Christmas, so. Anyway, I'm, I'm off the point already. So inside the pack, you get our yeast, 15 grams of that as well, hope it is. You get a packet of bourbon, bourbon barrel oak chips, 30 grams. Let's get brewing, let's have this done in like literally 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm not using sugar, I'm not using enhanced serum, I'm using, what is it? Spray malt. Spray malt. 500 grams of spray malt going into this. And then the kit, it's going to be 14 litres of water, so yeah, we're going to get this. We'll uh, dissolve it all in the hot water and then give it a boil for a couple of minutes and then into the format. Yeah, I'm gonna turn my back. If that boy's over, let me know, okay? Okay, fermenter is sanitized. Extract. Very dark in there. Going in now. I'm trying to get the last bit out of this, but okay, that's the majority of it all loosened up now. You want to see? The, you want to smell the, the aroma coming off this? It's like it's like dark kind of blackberries and plums, and it smells like jam, like dark jam. Wow, it's fantastic! Absolutely fantastic. like old bottles of plastic and fill them with water if they're not already filled stick them in the fridge overnight this has been in the keyser so it's like five degrees in there and then that way by the time this gets to the top it should have got down to nearly a pitching temperature I used to try and do it in the sink that was a real pain in the arch be standing there for like an hour, trying to cool the thing down, stirring it and everything, and just yeah. This way, it's a lot quicker. 
does take a bit of preparation, not an awful lot though, like just to make sure you have the gumption to do it the night before. Gumption, there's a word you don't hear very often these days. Gumption. Get it sitting about 26 degrees. A little bit high for pitching, but not far off. Not far off at all. 26.5. Okay, that is it. That is the brew day over, and that was like literally about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, it's still a bit foamy in there, but it looks in and around 1070, which this is supposed to be a 6.5% beer, so and it's supposed to, according to the instructions, supposed to finish on between 1018 and 1021, which I figured was about 1070. So that's good. Um, the, in the instructions, it says that you're supposed to put the oak chips in, these oak chips in now, and then pitch the yeast. I mean what? Seriously? I am not doing that. I'm going to wait the fermentation is complete and then I'm going to put them in and leave them in the, in the, in the bucket for another week. I don't know, does anyone out there who's watching this, have you ever put oak chips in at the start? Doesn't sound right to me. No thanks. Um, so that also means then I can top crop the yeast in a couple of days time and then I can have it and then I can brew another couple with it and see what it's like. Um, this is maybe isn't the best. You don't really know a yeast until you do a paleo with it I think. And then you can see so. Or do your go to beer let's say. So yeah that's it. So this is going to be fermenting for a week. Um, and then probably or maybe 10 days. I'll do the usual 10 days fermenting. And then a couple of days with the dry hop, or in this case, it's the oak, chi the oak chips. Taking a gravity reading there on the, the bourbon barrel eel. Hard to see, but it's about 10, 20. I wasn't even pointing in the right direction. 10, 20, 22, something like that. Which is pretty much what the recipe was calling for. So, been like up for a couple of days, so I think it's finished. I had it cranked up to 23 just to let it ferment out if possible. So this, this is our oak chips. So what these is, it's not just oak chips, it's in the liquid, it's bourbon. I went out and bought some bourbon, it's about 250 grams of bourbon. And I had a couple of vanilla pods. So I have um, scraped out all the black stuff inside the vanilla pods, sliced them up and popped them in here as well. So. Interesting to see what this smells like. You want to smell it? What's that smell like? Hold on. Hmm. It smells like bourbon. Basically that's all it smells. So yeah, we're going to be putting it into the bucket now. Um, I'm going to have to put the phone in the stand to get this. There's more hot bags. I'm going to use a hot bag rather than just chuck it in. Because possibly I'm going to be pitching onto this yeast cake. I don't know. Um, maybe a porter. Who knows? So yeah. Um, let me get some a stand or something. I'll get back. You're perched precariously on top of a keg. So I've got some marbles in this bag. And in this bag, this will weigh it down and keep it under water rather than just having it floating on top. I don't know if it really makes a difference to be honest, but it's kind of what I do with hops sometimes. And then this nylon bag. Get that in there. Let's check that off. And then the nylon bag will be going in like that. I'm actually going to have it around here. Tie it around the handle. So I'm intending to leave this for a week, maybe. This is about day nine, I think. So I'm gonna maybe I'll leave it the next weekend and then package it up, or I could leave it longer. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, let's see the vanilla. A bit of a pain. Of course there's stuff stuck at the bottom. Of course there is.
there is the finished bee right there, wow. It looks black, it really does. Um, this is obviously not the best light. Should have really done this in the daytime and then it would have been a bit clearer, but yeah, that is kind of a dark brown, kind of deep red colour. It looks black there. The head is kind of a bit tan. The head actually looks like something on Guinness on Nitro or something like that. It looks crazy. Um, I've had this on in the keg now for 53 days, it said on Brewfather. Um, but it hasn't been on the gas the whole time, so I basically just charged it up, or carved it up to begin with, and then I just take the, um, just turn the gas off, and then hit it every now and again. And um, it just seems to soak in the gas, and it just becomes this beautiful, beautiful looking beer. Basically, is what I'm saying. How you doing? Not a start. Honest. So, uh, that's a good start. That's a good start. So let's go in for the aroma. It smells good. There's a definite um, smell of bourbon off that. With a little bit of kind of dark fruits. But the definitely bourbon. Getting off that. It smells. It smells good. It looks good. It smells good. This is only going one way. Cheers. First thing you gotta say is that mouthfeel is just amazing. It is. It's full. And it's so velvety smooth. It's fantastic. Got a lesson to die for. Fantastic. The taste. The taste is bloody good as well. The taste is kind of. Well, let me get another one. The taste is. It, there's definitely. This kind of fruity taste of it, that dark fruits. I'm actually getting cherry off it now. Definitely cherry in that. And weirdly, there's like a little bit of kind of apple, kind of fresh. You know, you bite into a fresh apple and does that kind of a taste or apple juice or something like that. I don't know where that's coming from. Um, but yeah, it's. That's it's pretty good. I have to say it's pretty good. Very little bitterness. There's a wee bit of caramel on that as well. That is just that is a really good beer. That is a really good kit. I have to say, um I really I'm really enjoying drinking this. As I said before, it's been 53 days, so I'm not in a rush. But what I want is, I've got four taps. I don't drink four kegs of beer at a time. I usually have two that I'm drinking all the time. I've got another one that's kind of in between that, and then I've got the long-term one. And that is the long-term one. <clears throat> and it suits me down to the ground. Um, It's just... It's perfect. I think it's probably perfect. I don't know how much... Because uh, I had put in the, more of the stuff, you know, the, the bourbon and the vanilla and all. I'm not sure how much of an effect that has because obviously it doesn't taste the original, you know, the beer with nothing or the kit with nothing in it. But I think that the heavy lifting was probably in is the kit itself. So um, I'm just, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. I'm really, it's turned out better than I thought it was going to turn out. I wasn't sure. Um, you know, sometimes you get kits and they're a bit of a waste of time. I'll tell you what, not that one. Definitely not. Do get a little bit of the bourbon as well on the end. Not too much though. The vanilla. I'm not really picking it. I know it's, it is hard to get vanilla into a beer. Unless you like you use loads. I would really like to get another one of those as well. And have it. And then maybe brew it up uh, for Christmas. It would go perfect. I mean, if it goes perfect in the summertime, then bloody hell, Christmas is going to be amazing. 
The only thing that I would say was, um, I remember on the packets they had a limited edition. So I don't know how limited that is, or what the deal is. And of course, the the one that I had the best before was like some time now. I think I was so. Yeah, but yeah, I can't recommend it highly enough. This is absolutely fantastic. I'm away. Cheers. But yeah, that is it. That is the bourbon strong ale. If you hear something in the background, by the way, because I can hear it, God knows I can hear it. It is the pub up at the top of the road. They're having some kind of fundraiser for the lock. Lock lifeboats, I think. It runs the lock. So yeah, it's really loud to them. I don't know what they've got up there. They must have like a stage set up outside. Okay. This is incredibly distracting. You don't know. I think they're turning it up. They know I'm making a video and they're turning it up. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. This is pointless, isn't it? I might have to just do this video tomorrow. Okay, let's plow through anyway, like the professional I am. It smells great. It, there's a definite bourbon smell in that. Definite. They're turning it up again. This is fucking ridiculous. Okay. There's no point in me doing this, sure is not. Okay, I'm gonna enjoy this paint and then I'll come back out tomorrow and do this because this is just really pointless.